So we have, we are saying that the patient was treated medically for psychosis, psychosis for two good weeks. Patient's condition improved, but there was what? Rigidity, there was tremor, hypokinesia developed, and which drug can cause such complications? So definitely you are looking for a drug that is used for the treatment for what? For psychosis. And that drug is called what? Antipsychotic drug or neuroleptic drug. So these are the drugs, antipsychotic or neuroleptic. So actually neuroleptic drug function or its mechanism of action is what? Uh, antipsychotic, antipsychotic. And the example of a neuroleptic drug, if you were here on Tuesday, you may mention something about psychosis, that you need a, what, a neuroleptic drug, if you can remember, neuroleptic drug. And the neuroleptic drug in this question is aminazine. Aminazine, aminazine. That's what over here, your answer would be C. Aminazine, aminazine. It is a neuroleptic drug. So you, I'll be writing this point down, so that after the video, I can replay the video or I can search online as well and learn more about the drug. That's how we learn. All right, so this is C. We have gonorrhea was revealed in a patient uh, on vitroscopy of the smear from the urethra. Now, taking into account that medicines for gonorrhea are fluoroquinolones, fluoroquinolones. So patients should be prescribed it for. What they are trying to say is that the patient should take uh, fluoroquinolones, fluoroquinolones. So the question is, among these options, which one of them is fluoroquinolone? Which one of them is fluoroquinolone? And your answer is what? Cipro, ciprofloxacin, ciprofloxacin. And it is used for treating what? Gonorrhea. It is used for treating uh, typhoid fever and other urinary tract what? infections. So that is the uh, drug we normally use for gonorrhea and uh, typhoid fever. So it's what? Fluquinolone. Fluquinolone. So your answer is A. Cipro. Cipro. All right. A patient with bronchial asthma was taking tablets which cause insomnia, headache, increased blood pressure. What medication can cause such complication? Now, for the COP2, we understand what chromoline sodium is. We say a chromoline sodium is a mast cell stabilizer, a mast, M-A-S-T, a mast cell stabilizer. However, that is not the answer. Actually, if you use chromoline sodium, that means you are trying to prevent bronchial asthma or you are trying to prevent what? asthma. But over here, that is not the case. They are saying the person is already having bronchial asthma and is taking a drug that is having a side effect as insomnia, that is not to sleep, headache, and increase in blood pressure. So what drug could we be thinking about? And your answer is what? Ephedrine. 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 So what is ephedrine? Ephedrine is actually what? A stimulant. And it's often used to prevent low blood pressure during spinal anesthesia. It is used to prevent low blood pressure during what? Spinal anesthesia. So that means that uh, if a uh, drain must be used when you are going through uh, anesthesia. And when you are going through anesthesia, what it means is that your blood pressure will drop. So this uh, if a drain will now lead to an increase in blood work pressure. So what it means is that because this person was taking this if a drain, Without not being or uh, for not being on anesthesia, it means that the blood pressure would, would definitely be going up. And when the blood pressure goes up, definitely you're going to have what, headaches and all sort of what effect. So that's why over here, your answer will be what? FA drain. FA drain. FA drain. So here, your answer will be B. 
your answer will be B. Okay. We have a diuretic drug was prescribed to the patient with hypertension, hypertension in the course of complex treatment. So in a few days, blood pressure decreased, but there were signs of hypokalemia. When we say hypokalemia, it means low potassium level in the blood, low potassium level in the blood. So what drug can cause low potassium level? Low potassium level. So you are thinking of what? Furosemide, a furosemide, or something that uh, frequently excretes potassium, or a diuretic that frequently excretes potassium. You remember uh, uh, spironolactone? It is a sodium antagonist or odestrin antagonist, which means it spares potassium. It spares potassium. So this could not be the answer because if it spares potassium, that means that there will not be what? Hypokalemia. So over here, you answered what? Furosemide. And another name for furosemide is called Lasix. Lasix. So Lasix should be your answer because Lasix is uh, it's another name for furosemide. And we also call it false diuretic. False Diuretic. So in some questions, you might see false diuretic. Please, if you hear false diuretics, they are referring to what? To a semite or they are referring to what? Lexus. Okay. We have a patient who was admitted to the infection unit with a diagnosis of bacteria dysentery. Bacteria dysentery. Now, we have a uh, protozoa dysentery. That is like what the last time we, we did, the mention of amoebiasis or amoeba dysentery. And we said treatment for amoeba dysentery was what? Metronidazole, because it is a protozoa. It is protozoa. But this one, they're talking about what? Bacteria dysentery. An example of a bacterial dysentery is shigellosis. 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 Or you can even think of salmonellosis. All these ones can be uh, example. Now, on lab studies, they revealed the critical element to be sensitive to what antimicrobial medicine. But the patient has anemia. Patient is having anemia. So, what medicine is contraindicated to this patient? What medication is contraindicated? So, that is what we are looking for in this question what bacteria is contra indicated that means if you have anemia you cannot use such drug and your drug will be what levomycetin levomycetin also called chloramphenicol chloramphenicol c h l o r a m p h e n i c o l Chloramphenicol, also known as levomycetin. Levomycetin. It is very, very sensitive to gram positive and gram negative what? bacteria. Gram positive and gram negative what? bacteria. Like I said, in this question, you could be thinking of what? Of a shigella. You could be thinking of a shigella or shigellosis, which is gram negative. Gram negative. So it is gram negative, then you will have to go for what chloramphenicol to be able to destroy this gram negative bacteria. And if you have a, a pregnant woman, you don't give it. So these are the contraindications. Pregnant women, you don't give the, uh, levomycetin or chloramphenicol. People who are breastfeeding, you don't give it. Uh, people who have anemia, you don't give it. Now, another group of drugs that are also the same as, or the contraindication is the same, is ciprofloxacin. The one we talked about earlier, ciprofloxacin. It's also used for the treatment of what? Salmonellosis. And it can be used to some extent in treating bacterial dysentery. Okay, so again, what happens? You don't give it for pregnant woman, breastfeeding woman, 
and uh, anemia you know, or anemic uh, people. You don't give it. You don't give it. So here, your answer becomes what? Level my team. Level my team. Okay. We have a patient with pneumonia has intolerance to antibiotics. What it means is that the person uh, is actually resistant to these antibiotics. So which of the combined sulfonolamide medicines should be prescribed to this patient? So they've given you a group of drugs that out of it is, is a combined drug, a combined drug, or say a combined drug, two drugs coming together to give you a better effect, okay? Two drugs coming together to give you a better effect. And the drug that you need to use or uh, a sofa melamine drug that you need to use. Actually, these kind of drugs, they actually were a, a folate antagonist. Folate antagonist. Folate antagonist. And the combined one is called cotrimozazole. Co trimozazole, C O co trimozazole, T R I M O X A Z O L, co trimozazole, which is the same as Biceptor, which is the same as Biceptor. Don't say, look at the name, so you are going for this one. No, 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 no. Please, no. Your answer is what? Biceptor, also known as co trimozazole. There are two drugs combined together. Two drugs combined together. All right. So the answer is A. We have a patient suffering from myasthenia. Suffering from myasthenia. Was administered uh, proserine. After its administration, the patient has got nausea, diarrhea, uh, twitch of the tongue and skeletal muscles, what drug will help to eliminate this intoxication? What drug would help to eliminate this intoxication? First of all, we must know that proserine is anticholinergic. It is anticholinergic. Anticholinergic. So what do you do? You want to give uh, a drug that will also inhibit or that is for cholinergic, right? Or that has a, a, a cholinesterase ability. A cholinesterase ability. That's what over here we'll go in for atropine sulfate. Atropine sulfate. Atropine sulfate. Atropine sulfate. So we'll go in for what? A at our likely word answer. Atropine sulfate. Actually, proserine and the physios stick mind, they're actually the same thing. They, actually, they have the same kind of effect. They have the same kind of effect. So, so atropine is given for the treatment of overdose or intoxication of cholinesterase inhibitors. Cholinesterase inhibitors or anti-cholinesterase what? drugs. Anti-cholinesterase drugs. And it is also used for the treatment of mushroom poisoning. So you can write it down. It is also used for the treatment of mushroom Poisoning, mushroom poisoning. So over here, your answer is A, atropine sulfate. We have a patient who has who had myocardial infarction. Now, when we say myocardial infarction, it refers to people who do not have what enough, uh, how do you call it, enough blood to the tissues or enough oxygen to the tissues of the heart. So the heart is not able to function properly because there's no oxygen to help the heart to function. What administered 75 milligrams of acetals salicylic acid, they actually referring to aspirin. So normally people with myocardial infarction, we give them aspirin. We give them what? Aspirin. This aspirin is necessary because people with myocardial infarction normally end up developing what you call AFib or atrial fibrillation, atrial fibrillation. So if you give uh, this aspirin, 
what it do it, what it does is that it prevents coagulation. It helps to prevent coagulation. That means it prevents clotting of blood. So it is a clotting of blood that can also uh, end up leading to what to how do you call it stroke. It can lead to stroke because blood is clotting. Blood is clotting due to what atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation. So we give this drug to prevent that from happening. And the mechanism of action or the way in which it prevents coagulation is that it reduces thrombocyte aggregation. It reduces thrombocyte aggregation. It reduces thrombocyte aggregation. So here, your answer is A. Your answer is A. All right. We have a patient with mercury poisoning. Do you remember yes, uh, two days ago when we talked about metals poisoning? Yes, those who were with us, they remember uh, metal poison or mercury poison. So what do you do? You give what? Your unitiol. Unitiol. We said if people are uh, intoxicated with ions, metals, whatever it is, mercury, whatever it is, what do you do? You give unitiol or that is the antidote. Unitiol. Unit. Okay. We have a five year old child who was diagnosed with acute right distal pneumonia. Sputum inoculation revealed the agent to be resistant to penicillin. When you say resistant to penicillin, that means that uh, penicillin are not able to cure or to eradicate that substance or that microorganism. But it is sensitive to microlite. It is sensitive to microlite. So over here, you need to know the type of microlite or examples of microlite. And the example of microlite is what? Azithromycin. 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 This ampicillin is also the same as what? Uh, how do you call it? <clears throat> it's the same as the penicillin. And we are saying that this person is it's resistant. You don't give anything in the game. But on a normal day, you're supposed to give what penicillin. But penicillin is resistant, so you don't give it. So this one you go for what? For the microlens. An example is what azithromycin. Another example is erythromycin. I believe you have heard something like that. Erythromycin, erythromycin, or uh, azithromycin. So here your answer is D. Your answer is D. So we have a patient suffering from chronic hyperacidic gastritis, chronic hyperacidic gastritis, and it takes on what? Antacid. Now, when we say hyperacidic, that means there's too much of ACL. So when you give antacid, the patient will feel what? Better. So for heart burn elimination, of course, too much acid will lead to a heart burn. Now, after each injection, the patient feels better, okay? But at the same time, he has a sensation of stomach swelling. Swelling. So, what or which of the following drugs might be the cause of such uh, side effects? So, definitely, you are thinking of what an antacid, okay? But the person was given an antacid, and actually, all of them here are all what antacid. All of them here are all what antacid, especially hydro, magnesium, magnesium, translucent, they are all sort of what antacid, right? So, which one of them has this kind of side effect? And the one that has that kind of side effect is sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrocarbonate. Sodium hydrocarbonate. Sodium hydrocarbonate. So uh, what it does is that it 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 reacts with the acid and produces what salt, water, and carbon dioxide. Salt, water, and carbon dioxide. And actually, the carbon dioxide begins to cause what. Uh, that uh, flatulence or that belching, belching, belching. So you will feel that there's a sensation of what? Stomach swelling. You will feel a sensation of what? Stomach swelling. But it's actually because of what? The carbon dioxide that is producing from the mixture of the acid to the sodium bicarbonate or the sodium hydrocarbonate. That's what over here we go in for, for this. So actually, in the field of work, or where I am working, or in fact, practically, the one that we normally give for antacid is magnesium 
transilicate, magnesium transilicate. This should have been the one to give for a patient having uh, this kind of hyperactive gastritis, hyperacidic gastritis. All right. So your answer is D. All right. So we have a patient who consulted the doctor about bowel dysfunction. The doctor established symptoms of duodenitis and enteritis. Now, laboratory examination helped to make the following diagnosis. Lambiosis, lambiosis, lambiosis. What is the medication used? Ladies and gentlemen, we talk about this in our first video. In our first what, video, we said any organism that is caused by, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Entamoeba, trichomonas, vaginalis, uh, gaidia, and all of these things. What do you do? You give metronidazole. You give your metronidazole. So over here, your answer is what? Metronidazole. Metronidazole, as simple as that. Metronidazole. Anti protozoa, anti protozoa, metronidazole. All right. We have an introduction of a pharmacological, a pharmaceutical substance in an experimental animal, which resulted in reduction of saliv uh, salivation, people mydrasis, intravenous introduction. Guys, look at this. They said intravenous introduction of uh, acetylcholine did not lead to any significant changes of the heart. What substance is it? What substance is it? It did not lead to it. It did not lead to it. And we made mention uh, some, I mean, just a few minutes ago, that atropine, you were, they blocked the acetylcholine was response. They block their response. They block their response. And that is why if you use uh, atropine, still it will not work. work. It will not work. It will not work. work. It wouldn't work. work. So again, atropine is what? It's an anti muscarinic agent. Anti muscarinic agent. Anti muscarinic agent. It reduces what? Salivation. So if you give it excess, that means the person will, everything will be so, 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 so down. There will be maybe be difficulty swallowing things. There will be tense. There will be dizziness. There will be fatigue. There might even be problems with coordination if it is what intoxicated. So over here, you are thinking of what? Of atropine. Atropine or atropine sulfate. Atropine sulfate. Atropine sulfate. So here, your answer is what? Is there. Your answer is A. Now, remember, the opposite of it is what? It's proserin, right? So if proserin was the one given here, that would mean that it will, will be reacting what? Against this guy. This is a colon. So it would have had what? An effect. But here's the case. There was no effect. So that means that you are still giving what? Uh, atropine. You are giving what? Atropine. All right. Continuous taking of a drug can result in osteoporosis. Guys, what drugs lead to osteoporosis? Continuous taking of a drug that can lead to osteoporosis. That means bone perforations or bone destruction. And again, it leads to what? Erosion of the stomach. What comes to mind? You are speaking of what? Steroids. Long use of what? Steroids. If I want to make a person take drugs for continuous, uh, a continuous, uh, what will make a person? Use drug continuously. It's because the person has what a chronic inflammation or a chronic problem like rheumatism. So you use what uh, mucocorticoids, and the mucocorticoids present here is what prednisolone. Prednisolone. So here you go in for what for E prednisolone. 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 So here your answer is what is E. Okay. We're having a 63-year-old man with collapsed symptoms was delivered to the emergency hospital. A doctor chose non-adrenaline in order to prevent hypertension. Of course, we know adrenaline will lead to 
simulation of change. So what is the action of a mechanism? So you just have, you just need to know that no epinephrine functions by acting on what? On the alpha adrenergic receptors. They will act or they act on alpha adrenergic receptors by constricting the vessel. So they are what? Vessel constrictors. Vessel constrictors. That is why we need to include in what? In blood pressure. And hence, it will prevent hypotension. It will prevent what? Hypotension. So here, you are talking about what? Uh, alpha adrenergic or alpha one adrenergic receptor. Okay. We have an apelin therapy. When we say an apelin, we also going to what? Propanolol. Propanolol. You know, propanolol is a what? Yes, it is a beta blocker. Propanolol is a beta blocker. It is a beta blocker. So the same as what? An apelin. Quantitative effect. On the, the dynamic of the disease of a 44 year old woman complaining of stenocardia, that means what? chest pain. Chest pain. So, what is the mechanism of action? Like I said, it is of a beta blocker. So, this was uh, beta, so this was blockage of beta adrenoreceptors, and it will decrease the myocardial requirements to oxygen. I think we talked about this the last time. Yeah. So, propanolol, it blocks. Beta receptors and also what decreases the oxygen demand by the heart. So here you go for for A. All right. We have a patient suffering from syphilis, has been treated with bismuth preparation. Has been treated with bismuth preparation. Like I said earlier on, if it is metal, if it is iron, lead, whatever. What comes to mind? If it's intoxicating of what you need tire. And I said, even in bismuth intoxication, what do you do? Do you you need tire? You need tire. You need tire. So over here they tell you they take the drug use for the treatment of bismuth intoxication. So see, if you understand the concept, you don't need to struggle for your answers. So it is what? Bismuth intoxication. That's why your answer is what? Unitayol. Unitayol. I've mentioned it and I'm speaking again. Unitayol is for what? Metal. So mercury, lead, blah, 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 arsenic, all of them. And then bismuth intoxication, you use what? Unitayol. Unitayol. So the answer is A. All right. A 44 year old child was admitted to the orthopedic department with shin fracture. Shin fracture with displacement. Bone uh, fragment reposition requires uh, preliminary work. analgesia. Of course, somebody has fracture, so if you want to fix it, definitely you need to give it up. Analgesic. So you did what? A very strong work. Analgesic. So over here, what comes to mind is either morphine or promedol. Either morphine or promedol. But this person is a child, so you, you want to give an opioid or an analgesic that has a, a smolytic effect, a, spasm, a spasmolytic effect. When we say spasmolytic effect, it will not lead to jacking or it will not lead to twisting of the muscles. If you are charged, you see these things, you'll, you'll be afraid and everything will be shaking. So if you give a drug or an opioid which has that uh, spasmolytic or anti-spasmodic effect, it helps the child to become calm and stable whilst they are doing the bone reposition. The bone reposition. So here you are thinking of promedol instead of what? morphine. In adults, you can give them the morphine. But in young ones, you have to think of promedol. promedol. All right. So we have a patient with abscess of the cut wound applied to the traumatological department. Doctor, for the cleaning of the wound from the pulse, wash it with 3% hydrogen peroxide. Foam was absent. Foam was absent. That means an enzyme is absent. An enzyme is absent. So what enzyme can you think about? You are thinking about what catalyst. Catalyst is everywhere. So if catalyst is not present, foam will not work. Foam. 
because you are looking for an oxidizing with agent. An oxidizing with agent, something that can what? React with oxygen or reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen with species. That's what you are thinking of, of a catalyst. You are thinking of a catalyst. You are thinking of a catalyst. So here, since there's no catalyst, definitely you wouldn't see any form for using. So here, we are thinking of insufficiency of catalyst or inherited insufficiency of catalyst. Catalyst. All right. We have a patient diagnosed with focal pulmonary tuberculosis. So this was a lung infection. Lung infection. So what drugs should be prescribed first of all? So you are thinking of what? tuberculosis. That's what TB. TB. And in TB, what do you do? You use isoniazide. 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 So don't think too much. Go in for what? Your isoniazide. As simple as that. So that's your, your first uh, drug that you need to prescribe. Isoniazide. Isoniazide. Of course, we also have what? Uh, rep, uh, repampicin as well. So when isoniazide is used, next one is what? Repampicin. Then you can think of uh, you can even think of uh, etunamide. You can think of it. There's another drug again that you can think of. There are about four of them. But for now, we're thinking about isoniazide. Isoniazide. All right. We have a patient taking uh, clonidine for essential hypertension treatment was using alcohol that caused intense inhibition of the central nervous system. Intense inhibition of the central nervous system. So what may be, what may it be connected with? What may be the connection? So we are looking for a drug combination. So as I said, 10 you're looking for, whereby two drugs is leading to a, a severe condition or it is uh, leading to an adverse condition. This is what an adverse condition or a greater response than the individual responses. So this one, you are thinking of what? Effect potentiating. Effect potentiating. Where effect potentiation simply means the interaction between two or more drugs resulting to what? An increase in response than the sum of individual uh, response to the drug. I repeat, effect potentiating is the interaction between two or more drugs resulting in a response that is greater than the sum of individual response to each drug. So basically, that's what it means. So taking clonidine and alcohol is leading to an uh, effect potentiating or a little a greater result than anticipated than anticipated so you see so the two of them that's how they are they are connected so here you are thinking of what effect potentiating effect potentiating so here your answer is e all right we have an examination of a patient with view extremely myotic people. There is sleepiness, frequent change stops respiration, urinary retention, slowing down of the heart rate, enhancement of spinal reflex. What are you thinking about? You are thinking about an opioid abuse. You are thinking of an opioid, look at the eye, myotic eye, or myotic people, sorry. There is sleepiness, change stroke respiration, urinary retention, Reduce heart rate. Everything is pointing down to it, to an opioid intoxication, to an opioid intoxication or a narcotic analgesic abuse. Narcotic analgesic abuse. Here you are thinking of what? Of morphine. 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 Because that is the opioid present over here. And how do you treat it? You give naloxone. Naloxone. That is how. You can give the antidote, or the antidote for uh, opioid or morphine is naloxone, naloxone, naloxone. We 
here you answer is A. So a patient suffering from diabetes mellitus after the regular insulin injection, his condition grew worse. There appeared anxiety, cold sweat, tremor of the limbs, general weakness in this moment. What the person can eliminate these symptoms? What can eliminate these symptoms? So definitely you are thinking of what? An alpha beta adrenergic agonist. An alpha beta adrenergic agonist. So this person is what? It's in anaphylactic what? Shock and it's having a hypoglycemic coma. Hypoglycemic coma. So, why would it be hypoglycemic coma? Because of the insulin injection. So, the glucose level will go down. And look at him cold sweat, cold, tremors, 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 anxiety, dizziness. So, you're talking about a reduce, so you give what? No. Uh, uh, you give adrenaline, adrenaline to stimulate or kick everything up again. Kick everything up again. So it is used for anaphylactic shock and hypoglycemic coma. So here we are thinking of adrenaline hydrochloride, hydro adrenaline hydrochloride. All right. So we have a continuous taking of some drugs. For going in, for going the pregnancy increases the risk of giving birth to a child with genetic what defect. What is the effect called? Great. So this is a signal of either mutagenic effect or teratogenic effect. So what then is a uh, teratogenic effect? A teratogenic uh, effect or a teratogen is simply an agent that can disturb the development of the embryo or the fetus. It can disturb the development of the embryo or the fetus. So what it happens is that it causes congenital malformation or birth defect. It causes birth defect. It causes birth defect. An example includes radiation, maternal infections, chemicals, and drugs. Chemicals and drugs. What about mutagen? A mutagen is a physical or a chemical agent that changes the genetic material, usually the DNA. It changes the genetic material, usually the DNA, thereby increasing the frequency of what? Mutation. It increases the frequency of what? Mutation. So there could be what? a mutation in this patient or a uh, a teratogen. Over here, they're about of genetic defect. So genetic defect has to do with DNA. Am I right? Now, birth defect has to do with an abnormal function of uh, how do you call it? Of the baby or something like that or congenital malformation. But we're talking about what? Genetic defect. So we're thinking of, of a mutation. We are thinking of a mutation. Of course, although the person was using what drugs, don't forget chemicals are also what drugs. Chemicals are also what drugs. So you can't say God has used chemicals, then you are thinking of teratogen. This is mutagenic effect. Mutagenic because we are dealing with what? Genetic defect. Genetic defect. Genetic defect. All right. So we have a doctor who administered a patient with with allergic dermatitis, H1 histamine blocker. Guys, we may mention this, we we'll talk about this the last time. You are talking about antihistamine, antihistamine. So if you go for what? Loratadine, loratadine, loratadine. No, waste no time. We are talking about antihistamine. So the answer is what? Is A. All right, a 19 year old woman suffers from primary syphilis. Uh, the person was given what? Benz, uh, benzopenicillin sodium salt. What is the mechanism of action? Of course, this is a, a beta lactam uh, penicillin. Beta lactam 
penicillin. And what do beta lactam penicillin do? They inhibit the formation of what? Peptoglycan. Peptoglycan in the bacterial cell wall. They inhibit pepto, uh, peptidoglycan, sorry. Peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan of the bacterial cell wall. So over here, for that was in my time, you're going for a B. For B. It's beta lactam antibiotic. All right. Great. So we have a 65 year old patient suffering from chronic renal insufficiency, accompanied with ev evidence of what? Edematia caused by chronic gonorrhea. What diuretics should be administered for false diuresis? Guys, do you remember? few minutes ago, I mentioned about false diuretics. False diuretics is the same as what? Furosemide is the same as furosemide or furosemide or Lasix. Lasix, furosemide, they are all the same thing. Or false diuretics, they are all the same thing. That's why it's key to understand. Key to understand. So if you're talking about false diuretics, Course that you can go for what? for E. Just go for E. And you don't have any problem. No confusion whatsoever. All right. So we have a patient suffering from coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease and has taken a certain drug many times a day to arrest uh, a endocardial attack, that is uh, chest pain attacks. Now, overdose finally led to what? intoxication. The cyanotic skin, dramatic fall in the arterial pressure, tachycardia, respiratory inhibition, concentration of met hemoglobin. Met hemoglobin. What drug? Usually, when people are suffering from tachycardia, we normally give them what? Nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin. Nitro. Because it helps to relax the heart. It helps to relax the heart. So we give them what? Nitroglycerin and nitroglycerin are what are nitrates or they are organic nitrates. Organic nitrates. So we are thinking of what organic nitrates. Organic nitrates. All right. Okay. We have a medication with stage two hypertension has been taken. So a patient with stage two hypertension has been taking hypotensive medication for the purpose of treatment. After some after a time, the arterial pressure decreased. Okay. Patients uh, started complaining of what? Flaccidity, sleepiness, and indifference. A bit later, he felt stomach pain. He was diagnosed with ulcer. So the question is: what antihypertensive drug has a relationship with the stomach? What antihypertensive drug has a relationship with the stomach? And this one, you are thinking of what? You are thinking of recipine, 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 recipine. Why? Because it leads to the production of HCL. And you know, HCL, too much of it is not good for the stomach wall or for the stomach lining. So, recipine leads to the production of what? Hydrochloric acid by the stomach. And therefore, the word hyperacidity in the stomach, which, of course, can lead to it. Can lead to ulcer. It can lead to ulcer. So here you are taking a food with a pain, with a pain as your likely diagnosis. With a pain as your likely diagnosis. Okay. So we have a child who suffers from idiosyncrasy. What is the cause of such reaction? So what then is idiosyncrasy? So idiosyncrasy is simply a genetically conditioned perverse organism response to drugs. That means that drugs do not work because there's a, a problem with their enzymes. There's a problem with their enzymes. So if you give them drugs, they do not function properly. They do not function properly. So there's what inefficiency or lack of enzyme participation in drug metabolism, in drug metabolism. And over here, what condition defines such reaction? Of course, hereditary enzymopathy. This means that they have what we call hereditary 
and democracy because hereditary and democracy is an inherited inefficiency or lack of enzymes participating in drug metabolism in drug metabolism so here you are thinking of what hereditary enzymopathy which is the same as drug idiosyncrasy drug idiosyncrasy Thank <laughs> you.